Well, as we heard earlier, the attack by an Afghan soldier has been condemned as abhorrent by the commander of Task Force Helmand. So what effect will it have on the working relationship between NATO forces and the Afghan National Army? Earlier, I spoke to author and former Grenadier Guards officer Patrick Hennessy, who's helped train the ANA. I asked him that very question. Well, I think it's very difficult. It will be very difficult for the Gurkhas uh, in question. Um, their bond of trust with the ANA they were working with will obviously have been damaged. Um, it will be very difficult for the Afghan National Army soldiers, uh, who will be as upset and as cross about this incident, I think, as their British counterparts. But I think the guys down in Helmand are all very aware of the job they've got in hand uh, and will try and retain that focus and, and try and get on with it. Um, Sadly, this is the second such incident in about a year, um, but in the wider context of the campaign in Afghanistan, many, many thousands of Afghan troops being partnered by many, many thousands of coalition forces, uh, these incidents remain extremely rare, and I think that's what most people will take away. Certainly, the seven months that I spent with the Afghan National Army, uh, I never had cause to, to question their loyalty. I certainly never felt uh, for my own safety, and, and having just come back uh, yesterday from Helmand and spent another couple of weeks with the Afghan National army, the Scottish soldiers they were working alongside might have sometimes been exasperated, um, but uh, tempers were never short, and, and certainly there wasn't any lack of, of kinship between the two. And yet there has been speculation today that this person may well have been part of a sleeping Taliban cell, and this could have been planned for, for months, perhaps even years. Do you think this kind of thing could happen again, and how can you spot these kind of people? Well, I, I would be very, very hesitant um, about that sort of speculation, and I'd be extremely surprised if it was anything as um, deep as a, as a sleeper cell. Uh, indeed, where there has been insurgent infiltration, it's tended to be um, with people who pass information to the insurgents. Uh, obviously, somebody firing uh, a burst into a sleeping room and killing people, although deeply tragic for those involved, it's actually not very effective for the insurgency because that person then has to run away and his cover is blown. Um, Incidents of this kind have tended to be an individual soldier who has been pushed over the edge. Uh, we don't know anything about the, the chap in question, whether he was having troubles, whether he was under stress, whether he'd been recently uh, publicly dressed down, perhaps for, for doing something wrong on a patrol. Um, so I'd be very surprised if it was anything as, as sinister as that. Um, Working with the ANA, you quickly realise which are the, the sort of stronger commanders, which are the non-commissioned officers who you can really look to to take a lead, uh, and you have to take information from them. And actually the best guys at spotting um, the people who are suspicious or the people who perhaps they don't trust are, are the Afghans themselves. Patrick Hennessy talking to me earlier. Meanwhile, you